Hello, and welcome to the Welding Lab. Okay, for this lesson, we're going to talk about GMAW welding, machine, operation, and setup. I don't know the objectives in this uh, are, are going to be pretty simple. We're not going to go over the whole machine. We're not going to talk about every nut and bolt and every diode on the motherboard. We're just going to over some broad strokes. A lot of it's going to follow this handout that we're going to give you the first week of the GMAW class. Uh, we're going to talk about a little, little bit about the machine, just a little bit about the machine, its components, uh, what you can what you can expect to see on most of these uh, portable welders uh, that you're going to see in the lab. Okay, uh, oh, we're going to talk safety and everything that we're going to be doing. We're going to talk about uh, the business end there on the lead, how the machine operates just a little bit, our, our gas, our gas regulators. Uh, and and how to set up a, a roll of wire. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so this is going to be a machine that's typical of what you're going to see in a fabrication shop, modern fabrication shop, or in the lab. Uh, this particular one will do multiple processes, uh, but we're just going to be talking about the GMAW process. Now, what this machine is going to do, this is a constant voltage machine, we're going to be pushing uh, this solid wire, consumable electrode, through these rollers out through the end of the, through the lead to, to, create, to create a weld. Uh, it's uh, fairly easy. This one happens to have all its components encased within the, within the machine. You'll notice in some of your booths you're going to find some that are exposed. There's, so there's quite a bit that's, that's the same, a little bit of differences, but we're going to use this machine as our, as our example. So we're, we're talking safety. Uh, let's begin with um, inspection of the machine before we even uh, turn the power on. So I think a good place to start there is going to be, well, let's start with the power cord and, and the power source that we're, that we're going to be tapping into. All right. So what we're going to be using when we're welding is we're going to be using uh, a lot of electricity to create this electric arc that's going to melt our base metal and our filler material. Uh, in this instance, we're going, to be, we're going to be plugging into this power source here. You're going to find these all over your lab and in your booth. Uh, important thing to know about these is don't open them. Just leave them leave closed up. All you got to know is this, is this is off and up is on. And when you're operating this, the best practice is to stand to the side, turn your head away, and turn it on. This looks like it would be a fine coat rack. It isn't. Don't hang anything on here, just leave it as it is. Try to keep the area clear so that if you need to be able to shut it off, you can get to it quickly and get it off. What this knife switch is powering is this receptacle over here. A lot of these receptacles that we have flip, flip open, and you'll notice from this plug that it's going to have four prongs. Let's see if the camera's going to pick it up there on the bottom. He's got this little bitty tab, this little guy right here. That's going to that's going to help you indicate it, and it also has these parts that are proud of the plug, they're going to let you know how to line it up. Some of these have, some you're going to find have a locking mechanism on it that locks it in place uh, to keep it from, from coming out. If you happen to be moving any of these machines around, you want to make sure that this thing, uh, if it has a locking feature on it that is unlocked, so we're not yanking, yanking, yanking and trying to get it out when it's already locked up, we need to get it taken off. But get it on, we're going to open it up, plug it in. If it has that locking feature, lock it down. We're not ready for that yet. We're still going to load the machine with, with the wire. Uh, when, when you're doing any kind of uh, wire change out or maintenance on those machines, it's best to keep the keep source unplug or shut down and unplug. Now, I want to talk about uh, what's going on in the, in the shops. In between shifts, you don't know what's going on. When, your shift, when you come onto your shift, you're going to want to make sure that your equipment is in tip-top shape and that it's going to be good, safe work in order. Uh, the place to start, that I like to start, is going to be at the power cord. Uh, start from the machine and work your way down to the plug. And you're going to be looking at, at the sheathing on, on the power cord. And you're going to be looking for any slices working in this environment. There's going to be sheet metal moved all over, plate metal also. You want to make sure that nothing's getting dropped on, nothing's getting sliced through this protective layer and exposing in any of the... Uh, any of the power cable for a good obvious reason. Also you want to look to make sure that it hasn't been smashed, that no forklift has run over your power cables, that nothing's crushed it, that it hasn't been drug over a bunch of hot metal and this is starting to melt off. 
and exposing those exposing those wires. Uh, good practice with with these after when you're inspecting them is to not wrap them around your bottle, your gas cover bottle, if you have one available. If you're not hooked up to a manifold, these, these bottles can containing 2,000 pounds per square inch of mixed gas, and if you happen to have a slice or some exposed uh, part of this power cord and it comes in contact with the bottle and if it happens to uh, come in contact with a grounding source there's a potential for an arc to uh, strike on the bottle and to uh, cause this bottle to have uh, uh, been uh, compromised to the point where a, a potential explosion is possible. How, how likely is that to happen this, if, if we have this thing wrapped around it? It's, it's less likely to happen if we're taking good care of this stuff, making sure that it's not crushed and that we're not, and we're having good safe practices not wrapping it around the bottle. Uh, when you get down, when you're inspecting it, get down to the plug, make sure that you don't have anything. Sometimes people are pulling on the, pulling on the cable and not on the plug and they get to yanking it around or somebody takes off with the cart and they forgot to, they forgot to unplug it and things get yanked on. You wanna make sure that uh, here at, at this end, that it's not doesn't have a bunch of exposed wires. If you're seeing insulation or exposed wires on that, uh, stop using it. Come get me. Come get uh, somebody who can get it, get it managed and and, uh, and get it taken care of. If you're in a in your work environment in the shop, get with maintenance. We might have to lock out and tag out your machine. Make sure that that uh, nobody's going to have to take the chance of running the risk of getting any kind of electrocution. So uh, make sure that these are in good shape. They're not cracked or busted. That these aren't we will wobble in and falling out. Uh, just a quick once every day could uh, save you uh, a potential injury. So, so moving uh, from the core to the bottle, as we mentioned, this bottle is containing 2,000 uh, 2, pounds per square inch uh, mixed gas. For this particular one, what we're going to use for this MIG weld process, we're going to use uh, what's commonly called a C25, and that's 75% argon and 25% carbon dioxide. Here, our local distributor, distributor Norco, we have a tag on it for a nine, it's Norgas nine. You might see it written here on the bottle as, as uh, just argon and carbon dioxide. Some of them were spelled out actually, their percentages that are, that, that are mixed in there. This one in particular just has, has, a, has a number nine on it, I mean, and that's what it is. Uh, I've removed the, the regulators from this one so that we can go over how to set that up. Normally you're not going to be doing that every day, but we want to get that covered. I could do a whole video just on bottle safety, on storage and transportation. We might do that and, and you might find it in, in our video list later on. Uh, but just for setting this up today, I want to talk about, uh, without going into great detail, when we have these bottles, we want to transport them with the cap on uh, when we have to change them out. And when we're, when we're setting them up on the machines, we want to make sure that they are, that they are chained up securely tighten up so that they're not going to be falling off. So, uh, if, let's say, for example, we've had, we just put this bottle on, we want to put the regulator on. What we're going to do is we're going to take the cap off. So it's someplace safe and out of the way. And we're just going to blow off the dust just a little bit. If this thing, if you don't know what's been going on with this, how long it's been out in storage, uh, if it's got dust, cobwebs, whatever, here inside uh, the valve, we just want to blow it out just a little bit. Now this thing's coming out of here, I mean, screaming fast, so we don't want to be standing in front of it, and we, won't want to, we don't want anybody that we're working with uh, standing in front of it. And in fact, this thing can be pretty loud, so you might want to let anybody around you know that you can be cracking this bottle. And it doesn't take a lot, you just need to crack it open just a little bit, Blow the dust out and look like this. And that's all you gotta do. Now these regulators, you can't just throw on any regulator. You wanna throw on a regulator that has that is set up for the type of gas that you're using. If we're using a straight up bottle of carbon dioxide, you're gonna notice that this valve is gonna be different instead of this female fitting, we're gonna have a male fitting, and this is gonna look a bit different here. It's gonna be, it's gonna have a, a uh, female part with a with a nylon washer in it. This one happens to be marked marked argon. And that's what we're using. We're using the C25 mix, but we can use this argon uh, uh, regulator. 
we want to be gentle with this stuff. This is soft material, this is just brass material, and we do have some delicate working parts inside of here that we don't want to, we don't want to damage. So, you know, we'll be swinging it around by the gas hose. We don't want to use and abuse this stuff. We want to take good care of it. Okay, so when we're putting it on, we want to check that the threads aren't all uh, dinged up, that they're in good shape, that the seat's looking good. So we can get it started. Okay, we're going to get it in there finger tight. We're not going to mash it on. You shouldn't have to mash it on there. If you have to mash it in there and you open this thing up and it's leaking, there's probably something wrong with the seat in the, in the valve or the seat on the, on the regulator. You don't want to be crushing this thing to get it to try and see. If, there's, if it's leaking, there may be something wrong. Look into it. Okay, so you see we're going to have two gauges here. This gauge on this side of it is going to let you know how much pressure you have inside the bottle. And it's going to be registered here. We can see it in PSI and KPA. We're looking at that PSI in the red on this particular bottle. And a brand new bottle, it'll jump up 1,500, 2,000 pounds per square inch. And when we're going to open that up, what we want to do is we want to make sure that, that we're not standing on this side of the, of the bottle. Uh, these have the potential with, with all that pressure in there. If this happens to be damaged or worn, there is the potential for this all that pressure pushing inside of there. Things go spraying, spraying, things go flying all over the place. So we want to stand by, stand inside, make sure that there's nobody in front of in front of this this part on the handle. And we're gonna crack it open just a little bit. Now it's gonna jump up there, and here we have about 1,600 psi. I'm gonna open up this valve all the way. Okay, this one here, this is measured in CFH or cubic feet per hour. And what we're going to want to do for this GMAW is we're going to be running 10, 15, maybe 20 tops cubic feet per hour. And, and to set that, we're going to do it by this little gauge here, this little dial. And we're going to watch that gauge climb up. And you can see this one, we're going to be, we're going to be right about in there. It doesn't take much. And we're, and we're, up, to, we're up to snuff. If we were to shut this off, we want to go in reverse order. We would, uh, well, we would want to shut this, shut this all the way down, bleed this off, and then back this out so this thing doesn't get a, a this doesn't get a memory in the in the spring of the diaphragm. Uh, but just for to get going, this is this is what we want to do. Get up to about 15, 20 CFH. Uh, I think that's about it. I think that's that's enough for now. We can go into greater detail in class in the lab or online at a, at another time. So let's move on to the components on the inside of the machine. Here we are again down at ground level. We're going to take a look at the insides of this, see how it works and what we got to do to get going. Okay, we're going to open it up. And what we got going on here, we've got this roll of wire. This roll of wire, this is a consumable electrode, meaning that that, that wire electrode is going to be running through the, this welding lead right here. It is going to be powered by our power source here. It is going to elect electrify up this liner that's running down the middle of this, this welding lead. It's going to carry that power to the end where we have this contact tip. And that wire is going to come shooting out the end of that contact tip and it's going to transfer electricity, create an arc, this is going to be a short circuit transfer. It's going to create an arc and it's going to melt off that wire and that wire, that consumable electrode is going to be consumed and be a part of that of that weld. It's going to be part of our, our filler material. We'll get into filler metal selection uh, quite a bit. Uh, for this particular one we're doing SMIG welding on some mild steel. We're going to be using uh, this uh, solid electrode. It's an ER70-S-2 uh, and uh, an 035 diameter wire. To be able to feed that 035 diameter wire through here, we've got this roller assembly. And we have this particular one, we have two different rollers. Some of these might see two, you might see four. Uh, and for this one, for this Lincoln, we have two rollers. 
Now these rollers, you can see, the camera's probably not going to pick it up, but you're looking at it, you're going to find right here, you're going to see, you can see it marked in millimeters and in inches, and that inch is going to be 0 0.035 inches. Uh, sometimes you see marked on both sides. It, they might be the same thing on, on both sides. You might see one side that says 035, another one might, might be 030 or 045. Uh, the side that you see is the side that it's going to be feeding on inside the roller. This particular model has a little guide block that you can, has these captured and knurled threads that are nuts that can help guide that, guide that wire. Uh, where it comes in through the back here and in the front in here, we, we have them marked. They are marked like 030 to 045. This will give you a range of, of what type of wire electrode you can run through there. You get up into 116, 332. It's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be running, running a much larger wire, much larger uh, liners, contact tips, etc. So what we're going to be looking for here in the lab is we're going to be running 035 and 045 electrodes. And this, this unit is powered. You can see here, if you look inside of this unit, and on the ones that we're using, we're also using some Millers. You might see uh, something like this. Here we have it's embossed. We have a positive sign and a negative sign. And you can change your polarity depending on what type of, what type of wire you're using and also what your, what your machine manufacturer recommends here on this chart up here. Uh, you, you're, when you open it up, you're going to see all sorts of stuff that's going to say um, wire feeding welding, stick welding, TIG welding. And it's going to give you diameters of wire, uh, solid wires, outer shield, inner shield. It's going to give you polarities. It's going to give you uh, sheet metal and plate metal ranges. These are, these are recommendations from the manufacturer. Also check your electrodes. I'll grab a box here. The stuff we're going to be running for, for the GMAW is going to be some Hobart Quan Mark 6. It's going to look like this. And you look at not only what were what the recommendations are from the machine, but also from the filler metal manufacturer. Uh, probably most importantly is going to be your WPS, your uh, welding procedure specification that you're going to get from your place of business, or your which usually or may or may not have a, uh, a welding engineer. It's it's going to let you know what the recipe is to make a good weld. But if you're not sure, uh, this is a great place to start with the information on the inside of the machine and your filler metal selection. Okay, so about that polarity, this one we're going to run as DC electrode positive. And so we've got our, our roller is going to pick up that here. And you can see on our ground clamp, which is this guy there, this ground clamp is hooked up to the negative portion. All right. So we know our, our ground is going to be negative and what the part where our, our electrode is going to be charged is on the part positive portion of it. Uh, before we load the wire into the lead, I want to talk about the lead a little bit. Now this lead, uh, they go 15, 20 feet. You might, you might have some really, some really long ones. Uh, we, we want to take good care of this stuff. We don't want, we don't want to, we don't want to, you know, really be bending on it and, and, and crushing those liners. We want to take good care of it. We definitely don't want to get run over by any forklifts or or anything of that, of that nature, we want to take good care of it because uh, what we have got going on is, is the electricity is getting pumped through right here where this thing plugs in, into this brass lug right there. And it's chooching all of that, all of that electricity through that liner and it comes out through the contact tip. And we've got this contact tip, which is, let me take this guy off. These are marked as 035 for this particular wire. So we're gonna match our contact tips with the electrode that we're using. Here we have an uh, insulator. These insulators, you're going to see probably that O-ring down there on the bottom. And these holes here in the top, there's the gas diffusers. When the gas is going through the machine, it's going to go through this, this tube right here, and it's going to get pumped up inside of that, inside of the, uh, this end of the, of, the, of the lead. And on that lead, if, you take, if we were to take this out, we would find a couple of O-rings on the inside of there. You want to make sure that those O-rings are in good shape. It, it may be one of those things where if you have poor gas coverage, you get porosity, you don't know where you're losing gas, it might be those O-rings are damaged, 
this might not be seated fully completely inside of this inside of this brass lug but this but we want to make sure that these are in tight this guy here is going to set it in there get it snug keep it from falling out we also have a plug on this particular one that's right inside here this this plug uh, for the controls when we pull a trigger it's going to tell the machine i need power i need wire and i need cover gas uh, let's see that, I, you can see here let's see the camera well, the camera might pick it up that little guy that looks like a spring which it is it's uh, that's our that's our liner that's what the what the wire is going to be coming through and we'll see a little bit more of that once we get this electrode loaded up for now we're just going to put this on I recommend that when, when you go to use my welpers, when you go to install your wire that you take off your contact tip, uh, sometimes it, the, the, uh, the wire electrode coming through, the liner might hit the back end of this it, and it might want to get jammed up inside. So it's, it's good practice to take it off anytime that you're going to load up the, load up the wire. So we're going to do that now. Oh, I want to talk about these just for a minute. These retaining clips are super important. This guy's going to be going roundy round inside this inside of this machine. And if you're working in any kind of shop where you got a high deposition of material, where you're putting it down, this thing's going round and round all the time. And these will work their way off and fall off. Fall off inside of here on the ones that are that are not contained within the unit or that are exposed. If it's up, if you've got one that's up high on a boom, you do not want you do not want to leave this guy off because you don't want three pounds of wire coming down on top of your head. So make sure that when when you're changing out wires, that that you've got a hold of this thing. You don't put it down and and, and misplace it. A good practice is take it off, put it on, get your new new a new uh, roll of wire and just keep it right in your hand and put it on. You see it on the back side of this it has this little peg. Um, on that it's going to catch on the inside of this and, and on the inside of this it's going to help rotate it around. On other different types of, of rolls they're going to be made out of plastic, they're going to be made out of cardboard and they're going to have little holes for this little, this little peg to, to set inside of. You see. Now then, how are they going to go on? Whether it's going to roll over the top or roll over the bottom, it's going to depend on on your roller assembly, on your on your drive rollers. Some th this one in particular, we have it. We're going to have it come in over the top because our our drive rollers are, are moving down. Our lead is hanging down towards the ground. We're, we're going to try and keep as many kinks out of this system as, as we can because the, these rollers here are driving this this wire 15 feet and it's got to push all of that wire through the liner and there's going to be a whole lot of friction moving this little elect this little diameter electrode this little wire all the way through there and we want to be able to have a, a, a consistent wire feed speed and any kind of any kind of friction due to oh man there's, any, there's a number of stuff any any kind of friction that's going to that's going to restrict how 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 well that wire goes through there. It's going to affect uh, it's going to affect our welding performance. Okay, so let's load this up. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Back to this. Some of these you can you can move them around. Say we're working somewhere we're high, up high, and we don't want to put a kink in this thing. Uh, we're able to take this unit. And we're able to move it around. This particular one is, is fixed where it's at, but uh, in some instances we're able to like move this around so that we're going to roll it from from underneath and, and feed it to go up to whatever elevated platform that we're that we're going to be working on. But this one in particular, we don't have to worry about that. It's all going to be we're going to feed it in over the top and, and into the and into the machine. So we'll start with that. How to do that? You'll notice that a lot of these. Let's see if the camera can pick it up. A lot of these wires right here, when we have them in storage, we're taking them off and on. We just put them on there and, and try to keep this thing from bird nesting. We don't want this thing, we don't want to let go of that wire and have it go spinning and, and flying off of there and, and uh, creating a, a big old nasty bird nest. So we want to keep it nice and tight and, 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 uh, and 
Oh, it'll come to me later. Okay, but anyway, we want to uh, take these and when we cut them off, what we don't want to do is leave that little thing hanging on there. Let's say, for example, it does get left on. Now, here's why it's a bad idea. To leave this little guy dangling on there the way it is. We've got all kinds of electricity pumping through this thing. Speaking of the electricity, we want to make sure that it is shut off. Uh, treat this thing like you would when you're changing out a car battery. I'm sure anybody that's ever worked on a car, somebody's told you, don't lay your don't lay your wrench on top of on top of the on top of these terminals, these positive and negative terminals, for a good reason. And here it's it's for the same same reasons. Keep this thing, keep this thing powered down, uh, and you'll have less much less likely uh, chance of, of electrocution. And after we get everything set up, we go to throw power on this thing. If we have these little these little little tabs of, of wire hanging out, you can actually have an issue where these things are dragging, scratching through the paint, you know, all day long. These things are going round and round. These things start scratching the paint. They start finding a way to go to ground, and you're gonna to to see some spark coming out of your out of your welding machine. That's bad news. So don't leave these little leave these little tags hanging on here. Get rid of them. Take them off. Okay, so we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to get this, get this off of here. I'm going to grab a hold of it before I clip it, make sure that I have control of it so that it's not going to come flying off of here and, and come un unwind and then bird nesting. I'm going to feed it through the back. And I'm just going to hang on to it, keeping it from unwinding. I'm going to push it down inside the liner. Then I'm going to close this thing up. And these drive rollers, being marked for 035, I'm using 035 wire. It's one of those things that we have to keep in mind if we're using what diameter wire we're using. We want to match the drive rollers on our contact tips and make sure that, our, that we're using the right size liner also. So we're, and then we're going to clamp this down. Now, this guy here is pretty important. A lot of folks just crank and crank crank and, and, and mash this thing down, this, this adjustment. This pressure adjustment, this is putting pressure on this, on this uh, roller onto this drive wheel so that it has good grip and that it's able to push that electrode through 10, 15 feet of uh, liner. Uh, how we set it is uh, a, a, a good way to go, a good way to think about it is we don't want, we don't want so much that if we have an issue this thing's going to be shoving wire. Uh, it, if we if we have uh, if we're having trouble on on the on the business end and we're, and, and we don't want it pushing a bunch of wire for it. we want it to slip a little bit so what we do is after we get everything going uh, we'll talk about how to adjust this so that it's just enough pressure to push it through there without it really cramming it so if we have some some sort of an issue maybe we have a bird nest up in here we don't want this thing filling this thing up full of full of wire it, it can they break off they find their way inside the machine and and create the same kind of potential problems as these little bits of, of wire that are hanging on this on this roll. And it makes a big mess. So if it does happen to bind up somewhere, we want it to slip a little bit. So we're only gonna grind, uh, we're only gonna put that down just enough to get uh, uh, that wire to go all the way through. What I like to do is when I'm when I'm getting it set up, once I have all the way through and I'm, I'm I can pull on the trigger and the wire's coming out, if I can pinch it just a little bit and going through my gloved hands and it's okay but if I like really bear down on it and then the wheels start slipping that, that's how I like to set them that's uh, how you do it you might it might vary uh, ask around how other people like to do it that's for myself that's how I like to do it so I've got uh, I've got this wire going through into my liner I'm gonna put this guide block on I want to talk just for a minute about about these little guys. We don't have these in the shop. This one, this one's mine. I brought from home off my own welder. Uh, this little felt wiper with this little this little clip. What these are is their their intention is to go on the wire. It has this little split in there, 
on either end. You see it split through by halfway. It goes on the wire. Uh, uh, there we go. Clips on. And the idea is, is as this thing's pulling it through, it's gonna wipe the wire off. It's gonna clean. It's gonna clean off any dust and debris. In these in these units where it's contained, uh, it doesn't. It's not as exposed as some of the ones that where the where the feeder unit is is separate from the power source and it's exposed and it picks up a lot of dust and debris and grinding dust. Uh, even in, in this one, they do pick up a little bit of dirt. Now, a lot of folks will use a, a, a wire lubricant on, on, on these filters. Some of these come already pre-lubricated. Pre uh, there's some debate on, on whether or not these are, if the, how well these work. Some people talk about how the felt will come off and it starts to build up on the inside of these guides and, and things get dirty. Without them, stuff builds up inside these guides and they get dirty. If you're having feeding issues, it's, it's good to be checking out these guides to make sure that they're, uh, they're, they're not all gummed up full of, full of dirt. And if you're not putting your wire away when you're changing out from one wire to the next and putting it away and you're leaving it in, in the area that you're working in, stuff's gonna get dirty. These will help to get it cleaned off good good uh, housekeeping and, and putting them away instead of just leaving them there in your booth to get dirty uh, helps a great deal to keep these things from from getting filthy uh, if you do use these and you decide to uh, use a a wire lubricant they come in a little bottle looks like a lighter fluid bottle it doesn't take a whole lot to get them in there but that that wire lubricant if we think about the properties of oil they're to uh, cool clean seal Cool, clean, seal, and something, I'm missing one. Anyway, so you, you are adding this lubricant to the wire and that lubricant could change your, uh, your chemical makeup of your weld. It's, I believe it's a hydrocarbon. And that's stuff that we usually wanna keep off of our welds. And you may look at a WPS and it may say, do not use that for that particular reason because we don't wanna be adding anything to the, to the recipe, to our weld recipe. Uh, I like to use these, but without wire uh, lubricant for that reason. I'm not adding anything to the chemical makeup of the weld that I'm not supposed to. Also, if I'm using a tubular wire, which we'll use like a flux core, a FCAW or flux core arc welding, uh, that tubular wire, that it's a little bitty, little bitty tube, think of like a, a roll your own cigarette where you're adding tobacco and you roll it up here in this, in this flux core uh, tubular wire electrode. Uh, it has a little bit of flux on the inside. It's drawn through a die where, where it's getting fed that flux and, and it's rolled. And if you happen to be using these with that wire lubricant, that lubricant will get inside of that flux and it will contaminate it and you're gonna have all sorts of porosity issues and, and contamination. You don't want that. Uh, this isn't something that, that we see a lot of, but I just wanna talk about that little pro tip. I like them without the lubricant, definitely not with uh, any lubricant on the flux core or you're gonna have a bad day. You're gonna have a whole lot of grinding going on, okay? So, uh, we've loaded this on. Now, what have we forgotten? This guy, right? We wanna keep that on as soon as we get it on or get this guy on and, and uh, make sure that it's on there securely. Okay, we've got a wire on, we've got a clip, we've got our wire fed through the proper size rollers, we've got our guide block on. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna power it up. We're gonna be super careful, okay? We're gonna be adding electricity to this thing. You know, we're talking three phase, 480. It, it, it's, it's some serious stuff. I, I want everybody going home uh, upright and not on a stretcher, so. Uh, when we power these things up, keep your hands out of them. I recommend using using good clean gloves. Definitely nothing that's that's that soggy wet gloves. Good clean dry gloves. Uh, we're gonna try to keep your hands out of this thing as, as much as possible. Uh, one for the electrical issue, and two, we've got mechanical stuff rotating around. We don't wanna we don't wanna get pinched in there. But now that we have the wire fed, we're gonna power it up, and we're gonna feed some wire through the through the liner. particular unit we have our, our 
our power switch is here on the on the on the front on the bottom. We're gonna get it powered up. It's gonna take a few seconds. It's gonna run through its own self-diagnostic, make sure everything's okay. You may see something on, on a modern unit like this on a modern digital display. If, if it has any issues, it'll help you like a help and then a, we'll throw up a, a code. Uh, this particular one is in good shape. Looks like it's ready to go. Uh, we'll a little further on in the video, we'll take a look at the front end of that on the control panel. But just for now, we've got it up and running. We're going to run some wire through it. Some of these have a feature, a jog feature, where it operates the, uh, the rollers without trying to apply power to the lead and without putting gas uh, through the solenoid and in, into the liner. Uh, this particular one, we're just going to pull the trigger and get it rolling. There we go. Get this out of the way. Keep that guy out of there. Okay. When you're running your wire through, make sure that it has a nice, long, easy curve, that it's not all bound up and kink. We're trying to push this wire through this liner, and we don't want to get bound up and creating a bird nest down in this area here. Okay. Sometimes, and you can. Sometimes with a gloved handle or without, you'll be able to feel it as it's coming through and through this last bit of the band. Just a little bit. There we go. Okay, I can feel it just coming up in through the handle about in here. Sometimes you may have issues where you can feel it. Uh, it starts slipping here. Uh, it's not coming through. Give it a little one of these, little, little little movement like this while you're pulling on a trigger and it might help unseat this. It might just be stuck somewhere here in the, in the neck of it. Give it a little bit of that action and, and out it comes. Now that we're back on this end, I want to talk a little bit about that, about that O-ring right there. There's a neat O-ring, you want to make sure that's on this on this insulator, this O-ring is gonna help keep the gases that are coming through here and out of these holes, out of this diffuser, and keeping that gas coming out this end of our nozzle. So what I'm looking for when I'm putting that on is I've got this O-ring, this is snug, I've got this wire coming out. I'm gonna put my 035 contact tip on. Make sure that it's in good working order. Before I put this nozzle back on, I'm going to look to make sure that I got it cleaned up. Sometimes it gets all splattered and built up inside of there. Yeah. The way to do that is you can use your welpers like this, stick it inside of there, grab them off, or put them in here, open it up, raid them off, and you got it fairly well cleaned up. So, when we're talking about these, this diffuser where this gas is coming out, this mixed gas. If that O-ring's in there the way it is proper, all of that diffused gas should be coming out the front end. Now you can see that contact tip there. We're going to get into that a little bit later about contact tip to work distance. We're going to want to keep that distance about three-eighths of an inch-ish uh, while, while we're welding. I know it's going to be difficult to see when you're first starting out, but uh, you'll get there. You'll get real good at it. Now that you have this thing out here, you use, use your welpers, flip it off short. And we're just about ready to weld. Okay, give it the good once over. Make sure that you've removed all these little, there are no little tags left on on here that we have. You click this on. Properly sized rollers. Let me grab my gloves real quick. Here we go. Now I talked about set how much pressure we're going to put on, on that. I should have done that first before I clipped it, eh? Okay, now then. Let's back it all the way off. You see these are rolling. This isn't going anywhere. As I, as I crank it down, you can see this thing starts rolling. Okay? What I'm looking for is it's sliding through my hand, but when if I squeeze it really hard, it stops. I squeeze it, it stops. I mean, the rollers are still rolling, but this isn't. That's about, that's about how I like to see it set. Okay. 
Well, we've got all that set. Uh, let's close it up. Yeah, let's, uh, let's check out the front end. We'll shut this down and we're going to talk about the front end of the unit and we'll show you what it looks like when we start it up again. Okay. Okay, here we are at the front of the unit on the control panel. Uh, we, what we're looking at here is we have uh, we got a couple of dials, a couple of toggle switches, we've got a power switch. Here we can see where the lead is coming out and also on our controller. This is a good one to make sure that we have plugged in nice and snug. If we're having issues up here, we're pulling the trigger, nothing's happening. Uh, we want to make, uh, this is a good one to make sure that we've got this plugged in nice and solid. Uh, we got going on, let's, let's turn it on, let's get it going. Okay, there's our on switch, we've, we've powered it up, we get the on going. It takes a little bit, it's thinking about it, thinking about it, run a little self-diagnostic, you see a little, little lights flashing here in the back. Everything's good to go, uh, you'll see it light up, it's going to look something like that. Uh, let's talk about this here, we've got like weld modes, what's, what's all this stuff about? So what we got going on here is we have different settings. For this machine, look on the inside. You're gonna see what all that means. You know, one for one for your stick electrode, uh, five for GMAW. And what you can do is when you're when you're going through these, you can also change stuff, change stuff up if you if it's necessary. Here for just a setting five for GMAW, you shouldn't have to mess with anything. Uh, it, uh, put it on on setting number five for that. Oops, come on, get back in there. Work with me. Here we go. So we're on setting five. You'll see you'll see all sorts of stuff here. Different recommendations again on the on the inside cover and here for what you can be using. A GMAW for steel, GMAW for stainless material, uh, aluminum. Here we have different setting suggestions for constant voltage or constant current on our sticks. What we're interested in for this GMAW is that we're set on number five, and we're going to talk about ballpark settings. I mean, it's not going to be like this is the way it's going to be set always and forever for every position and all that. No. Ballpark settings when you're just getting started out. Uh, volts at about 18, 18 and a half. Uh, wire feed speed is going to be 268. Now here with this being a constant, constant voltage machine, we're going to set this in this machine, even if our, even if our contact tip distance to our work is going to vary, this machine is going to try and maintain a constant voltage. Even if there's a, a, an interruption in the wire feed speed, say we've stepped on our lead, we've got a little, little kink in it or something's going on, something doesn't feed, feed right, the machine's gonna, gonna help, keep it, help, uh, help maintain. maintain. Um, now our amperage is affected by our wire feed speed. As we increase our wire feed speed, increase or decrease, the machine's gonna increase and decrease amperage. That it's, and as the demand increases for wire, the amperage is gonna go up, okay? Uh, recall, it's gonna be voltage, about 18, 18 and a half, ballpark, ballpark settings, uh, wire feed speed 268. You'll notice that with you, you or Buddy or me, if you're welding with me, I'll do a little bit of welding. We'll see this 268 go away and this little red light will go from wire feed speed and it'll tell you what amperage you're running. Uh, important to know, especially if you're working on a WPS, it says that this is an amperage range that you have to, that you have to stay within, have a buddy uh, watch the machine for you while you're, while you're running some wire. Uh, or sometimes you can get out from underneath, out from underneath the hood, and it'll it'll show you what amperage you're running. Uh, if you have any any trouble uh, dialing it in, getting getting set up, uh, get, get with me or one of the other instructors or with the staff, and and we'll uh, we'll help you out. Yeah, nothing to it. Anyway, that's it, basically for for setup and getting going. Uh, the next step is is pulling the trigger. Thanks.